Hey, it's Mr. Anderson and it's 2013. If you're taking AP Biology, that's really important because this year they redid the whole AP Biology curriculum and that means if you're taking the exam, it's a new, improved, and very different exam than any one that's been given in the past. And so no student or teacher can tell you exactly what the test is going to look like because no one's taken it yet. And so it's important that you learn how this test is going to be different and so you can prepare for it. Because hopefully you're watching this video months ahead of the AP exam so you can prepare for it. But even though you might be watching it the night before the exam, cramming, you can still pick up some tips that are going to help you on the test tomorrow. And so what is an AP exam? Basically it's an exam that shows how well you know the material. And do you know it at the level of a college introductory class? And so you're going to take this test. It's over three hours long. It's two parts to it. And then you're going to get your scores in the summer. And when you get your scores in the summer, it's going to come in an envelope. And all it's going to have is a number inside it. It's going to say you, that you got a 5, a 4, a 3, a 2, or a 1. And if you got a 5, a 4, a 3, then you passed it. And if you got a 2 or a 1, then you didn't. And almost a quarter of a million students are going to take it on that same exact day at that same exact time. And about half of them are going to fail it. And so I want you to get to the area that you're in of a 5, a 4, or a 3. Three. Um, and why is that? Well, basically, if you get a five on the AP exam, it means that you could get an A in an introductory biology class. And if you get a four, it's like getting an A minus B plus or B. And if you get a three, it's like getting a B minus C plus C. And so it's really important that you understand the mechanics of the test to do well. And it's basically broken down into two parts. You have section one, which is going to be multiple choice section, and then you have section two, which is going to be free response. And each of those sections are going to give you half of your score on the AP exam. So it's 50% in each of those. And that's different than the way it was in the past. First part's going to be multiple choice. And you're going to have 90 minutes to complete it. Um, you're going to have 63 multiple choice questions. And each of those questions are going to have four responses. It used to be five in the past. And then you're going to have six grid-in questions. Grid-in questions are, are, you're going to use a calculator to answer this. It's going to be a problem. And then you're going to grid in your responses, and I'll show you how to do that. In the free response or the essay portion, you're going to have 10 minutes to read the essays, and then you're going to have 80 minutes to write your essays. And those essays, there are going to be eight of them. You're going to have two long free response or essay questions, and then you're going to have six short free response. And so let's get to the multiple choice. If I could give you some tips, the first tip would be to study. Don't cram. If you prepare over a long period of time, you can do better on this portion. You should use a study book to prepare. Uh, I like the Cliff Notes book. The problem is that if it's before 2013, it's going to be for the old test. And so the content might help you, but the test is simply going to confuse you. And then um, you should take a bunch of practice exams. So there are going to be those in those review books. Uh, but you should also be able to find a bunch of questions online. And for multiple choice, you want to do as many of these questions as you can. Um, it's going to give you practice and it's going to give you confidence. You want to budget your time. Even though there's 60 some multiple choice questions, 63, um, the gridding questions are going to take a longer period of time. And so you want to make sure that you're not spending too much time on those multiple choice questions so you can't get to the grid in. And then you want to use a, a process of elimination. In other words, you can write on your test. And so you want to start crossing off answers if you know that those aren't right. And then you may have to eventually come to the point where you make a guess. Watch out for reverse questions. And so you can have questions that will say, for example, all of the following are found in cellular respiration except and if you don't see that word accept, you're going to jump at the first wrong answer. And so let me give you an example of a multiple choice question. You could go to this website down here on the bottom. AP, uh, the College Board has released uh, practice questions. And so you could go through a, a bunch of them as practice. And so basically what you're going to get is you're going to get a lot of information at the top. Probably more information than they used to get on the AP Biology exam. In this case, they're giving you information on a lab, and they're telling you some data right here. And then they're going to basically send you to the question. In this question, they're talking about uh, what should be included in this setup. And so the right answer in this case is going to be A. But then you'll notice that they're going to give you another question that's related on that same. And so you may have three questions that just go from the certain amount of uh, information that you get at the beginning. Um, and so you could pause the video if you want to take a look at this and then guess what the right answer is. In this case, the right answer is A again. And so I don't want to go over these questions. I just kind of want to show you what they're going to look like. You then move on to the grid-in portion. The grid-in portion, you're going to have area where you can work 
And you're also going to be able to use a four-function calculator. So not your TI-84, but you are going to be able to use a simple calculator. So that means that there are going to be problems that require you to use a calculator. The answers that you get, you're going to grid in. And let me show you what that means. Let's say you get the answer 502. You're basically going to fill it in on a form like this. You'd write 502 right here. But then you're going to have to grid in the 5, the 0, and the 2. And for a lot of these questions, there's going to be a range. And so your answer has to be in a specific range. If you were to grid in 502, you could do it like that. But you could also do it like that. And you could also do it like that. And they've assured us that the computer's going to figure out that you got the right answer. But how do you put in something like this, negative 4.13? How would you grid that in? Well, you can see that there's a negative right here. And so you would, first of all, write it across the top, negative 4.13. But then you're going to grid it in just like this. You've got to put a decimal point in there so the computer can read that. Or let's say we were to do negative 2 tenths. And I probably should simplify that. But how would you put that in? You're going to put a negative again. But then we're going to be able to put this uh, fraction bar in. So you can say it's negative 2 tenths. So that's how you physically put in your answer. But what are the questions going to look like on the grid in portion? Well, here's an example of one. So they're giving you a genetic problem up here. They're saying that we're planting 146 seeds. These are the plants that come up. Um, and then they're asking you to calculate the chi-squared value. Now, you might freak out. Like, I don't know what the chi-squared formula is. Well, the nice thing about the test is they're going to give you a formula sheet. You could find that on the website as well. And it's going to give you all the formulas that you might have to use on the test. In this case, it's going to give you the chi-squared. But don't think you're going to go into the test and just be able to kind of, since I've got all the formulas, I'm going to be able to figure it out. You want to make sure you go through that formula sheet so you know what the formulas actually mean. And so in this case, we'd figure out our expected values. And then you're going to come up with um, your observed values and then come up with a chi-squared test, what the answer is. Let's go on to the essay portion. The essay portion, after the multiple choice, basically you get a break. And they give you a certain amount of time to break. Uh, and then you're going to have the essay portion. For the essay portion, they'll give you a sheet that looks, this is one of my old students' sheets. And basically, they'll let you see all the essays. And they'll let you write on that sheet of paper. Um, but you can't start writing your essays yet. They'll give you 10 minutes to plan. This is super important. You want to go through, read the questions. And you want to kind of have a plan of attack so that when the clock starts, then you can start writing your essay and doing the work. And so you want to write yourself a bunch of notes all over this, um, this essay, uh, the question uh, form. Let me give you some tips on the essay. You want to make sure you read the question, and then you read the question, and then you read the question again. In other words, read it over and over and over again. Make sure you know what they're actually asking. You don't want to miss points because you didn't really understand what they were asking. You want to answer everything. Don't leave any place blank. You want to make a stab at it. Um, you want to budget your time, and you want to leave space in your answer form. In other words, if you know that, man, there's one more thing that I want to talk about, leave space. Go on and then come back and then you can fix the essay a little bit later. You want to understand direction words. What are those? Well, in the essays, there are going to be, there are going to be direction words that tell you basically what they want. So it might say to explain how photosynthesis gets free energy from the sun. Or they may ask you to describe the, the uh, different steps in um, the cell cycle um, or discuss the results that you see. And these terms are super important. And the reason they look weird here is that I went through years of essays. I looked at all these direction words, and I found the ones that are asked most frequently. And these are them. So you're going to have propose and construct and draw, label. But these are the big ones that you want to understand. So you want to know what it means to explain something. What does that mean? It means to make it understandable. Or to describe is to give properties of. And so you want to make sure that what these terms are, that you could understand what they're really asking for. So let's get to what a long free response is going to look like. There's going to be two of those. They're supposed to take you about 20 minutes to answer each one. You'll answer them in essay form. So you can't just write bullets points. Um, and you can't just write an outline. You really have to write an essay, like an essay might be. And you'll write these in pen. And so basically, they're going to have multi parts to it, these long response. So it's going to give you some information here. It's going to ask you to graph the data for part A. It's going to ask you to draw a curve for part B. You can see here some of those direction words like explain, describe, justify, draw, explain. We can see that again. And so you're going to want to answer every part of this. 
Now these essays are going to be graded by humans in the summer and so you want to make sure that you're writing so that they can read it and that you're making sense. Don't worry about grammar, don't worry about spelling, you just want to get your thoughts out there because you can get points for everything that you do. And so basically they'll show you how this one would be graded but you could get five points just from this first part to graph it and then to explain the curve. You could get two points from this, two points from this, three points from this, so there's a lot of points out there. The only, uh, the maximum you could get would be 10 points from one of these long free responses. And so what that means is I see way more than 10 here. And so you can get your points in different areas. And so you want to put out as much information. As long as it's the right information, you want to put that forward. Short free responses are going to look short. <laughs> these should take you about six minutes each. And there's going to be six of these. Again, you write it in essay form and you're going to use a pen to do that. They're going to, in this case, they're giving you some data and asking you to describe and explain. This one right here, they're giving you data and they're asking you to explain. So again, we see those direction words. And so you may want to look at this um, URL right down here and then look at the essays. And then they'll show you what you should um, have written. In other words, how these would be graded. Um, so you maybe get four or three points from this one. So what do you study? What do you study to get ready for this test? Well, this year, the test is built on two things. We have what are called science practices, and there are seven of those. For example, a student can use representations and models to communicate phenomena. A student can use mathematics. I'm not going to list all of these. But basically, there are seven practices that you should have developed throughout the year. Now, I'm going to make videos on each of these practices. and. Um, We'll have a link right here to a playlist that's not done yet that's going to bring you to those practices so you understand what they are. And then we're going to have the content, the essential knowledge, and there are 55 essential knowledges that you should understand in AP Biology. And I've created a video for each of these. And so there's going to be a playlist again right here you can click on and it's going to bring you to a video of each of these 55 essential understandings. Um, and Basically, the way the test is going to be written is they're going to put those essential knowledge on one side, 55 of them, the practices on the other side, and then they're going to choose the questions by simply saying, okay, science practice two, using mathematics, and then this knowledge, let's say this is about free energy, then they're going to have a question that asks you to understand the knowledge and then how to use the practice. And so the test is different this year. They're really going to have you doing more science. They're going to have you doing math and not just doing factual recall. Because in the previous test, there were a lot of questions that were simply essential knowledge. If you knew what happened in metaphase, then you're going to get that question right. It's different now. The questions are going to be more difficult, um, more application, but hopefully you've prepared for that the whole year. And I hope this was helpful.